Hello everyone and welcome to a Halloween special of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. The series where we create Halloween crafts from Pinterest without any instructions. Because it's spooky time! It's time to scare the shit out of everyone! I want these crafts to be terrifying! Okay, so I think the first one we'll try are these little night lights in jars, but they've got spiders in them, so that's very Halloween. And I think they're quite cool. I think it's definitely going to be an easy one. I can't see any problems with this. And I also think it'll be quite cheap to make, so... Bonus points for that. And I haven't made a wreath in a while, and I used to be obsessed with making wreaths. I was just making wreath after wreath after wreath. And anyway, they've got this spider web wreath, which I think is really cool. And I think it's going to be a very easy one to do. It's just an embroidery hoop, like they've said, with some of that fake cobweb stuff, and then just stick some spiders on. But I think that's really nice. I would, I would happily decorate my home with that for Halloween. I think the third one we'll try is this bubbling cauldron. I don't think they've obviously made their cauldron from scratch, and I'm not going to either. But they've used Christmas decorations to obviously create like the toxic bubbles coming out with some eyeballs And I think it's really fun. This one isn't necessarily spooky You're not gonna see it and you know shit your pants But I think it's quite fun and colorful and I like that. I like that for Halloween Everything's usually just like really dark and blah. This one's got a bit of colour. I like it. I'm going to do it. And I think the final Halloween craft project we'll attempt is this Beetlejuice inspired plant pot. And I think it's really, really cool. It's very different. I don't think I've seen anything like it before. I don't know whether I've seen Beetlejuice. I'm pretty sure I have. I don't know what the tentacles are for though. If I've seen Beetlejuice, it's like many, many years ago. But I think all I need for that is a little terracotta pot, a bit of moss. I'll have to figure out how to make that tentacle. And then jobs are good. And we've got a little, a little Beetlejuice inspired plant pot. How fun. Are they called Sandworms. I might have to watch Beetlejuice again. By the time the second part of the video comes out, I'll have watched Beetlejuice again and I'll know where that's come from if I get time. I'm sure I will. So I think that's all the crafts I'm going to attempt for today's Halloween special. And I think it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. I, I'm, I'm, I, oh, there's a fly. Oh, there's a massive blue bottle in the studio. It can piss off. It can piss right off. Ah, I'm distracted now. What was I saying? I don't know. I'm excited for some Halloween crafts, so... I'll see you when I see you, and hopefully I'll get that fly out my room. Well, I'm finally back, and I did get round to vanquishing that fly. I say I vanquished it, I have no idea where it's gone. It's disappeared. I do have a lot of spiders in the room now, though. I don't know where they all came from. I named one of them Margaret. She seems sassy. But anyway, I thought I would start off with the bubbling cauldron. So the first step was obviously getting my hands on a cauldron, which I did. I bought this lovely one online. And because I'm going to be filling this cauldron with baubles to resemble the bubbles, I decided to use one of my favourite materials, expandable form just to fill in some of the empty space so I don't need to use as many baubles as I would if I didn't use this. That, that sentence came out so weird. And once the foam had dried and set I just decided to spray paint it black just in case any of the white bits from the foam were shown through the baubles because that would just ruin the illusion and I'm all about illusions here on the channel. So now I have my cauldron here it's all bubbly and lovely and very very black which is perfect. I've also got a bunch of different Christmas baubles, some kind of old ones that I've salvaged out of my Christmas drawers. And I've also bought a few just to spice it up a bit. And then I've also bought some of these little spooky eyes, which will be perfect. I love these. And now I'm just going to hot glue it all together, really. I think that's all they've done. I suppose the good thing about this is you can kind of make it however you want to make it, really. I think mine's going to look very similar to theirs, regardless of how it looks. I'll start with big ones first. I think that's important. All about composition and layers and shit. Weirdly enough as well, it's only been like obviously seconds for me to get to this second part of this video for you watching. But for me, it's been absolutely weeks. In fact, I haven't sat down, like probably sat down in this chair and recorded a video in four weeks because I've been working on another video that's coming out towards the end of this month. And seriously, this idea I've had has taken so long. It's taken me Age, well, it's taken me four weeks. It's taken me more than four weeks, actually. I've been recording bits here and there throughout kind of the past couple of months, but I've really had to go four weeks of intense crafting. I'm not going to give anything away. And it's coming along quite well. I can see it behind the camera. It's literally behind the camera. And honestly, it's... It's the best work I've ever done. I'm so excited to record that video. But yeah, it's a weird one because obviously I work during the week, Monday to Friday, and then the weekends are dedicated to recording kind of my craft videos. Sometimes I'll do bits in between. And I've been feeling a little bit like a machine recently. Like I've just been working, recording, 
working, recording. It's just kind of like repeat, repeat, repeat. And having four weeks off, I thought I would like feel kind of like chilled and I would enjoy a break from it of like making my videos and just kind of chilling and obviously crafting but doing other stuff. And I've missed it. I've missed sitting here and recording a video. In fact, I've felt quite stressed these past four weeks because I haven't been sat here recording a video and editing and stuff like that. I don't know what that says about me. I don't know whether it means I'm sad or not. I just really like making videos. I think it's a good test for any content creators out there. If you can go a few weeks without recording or however long and then come back to record a video and actually get excited about it. I think that's a very important thing because you know you're doing something you just really enjoy. So yeah, I've been excited. I've been looking forward to this weekend because I was like, ooh, ooh, I'm going I'm to record stuff. I'm going to edit. I can't wait. I'll regret it later on when I've spent about 10 hours editing or 10 plus hours editing and my back's hurting and I'm tired, but still, I'm, I'm very excited to be here today. Oh, I'm finding it hard to fill in space already. There might be a lot of hot glue shown with this at the end, but I don't think that matters. And like a few things have gone on since I've been like aware. I say I've been aware, I haven't been aware, but since the four weeks I've actually sat and recorded and spoke to everyone. Some things I'm not allowed to talk about, like some things that have happened at work. There's been some like drama and like proper spicy things, but I'm not allowed to say anything. I wish I could, but I really can't. But with personal life, I've actually ended up getting a new car. So that's fun. I've actually had the new car for several months, but I've been waiting to get it fixed up because I bought this car and it had been in a car accident. So I bought it at auction because it was cheaper. And then I've been getting it fixed up and stuff like that. It's still cost me an absolute arm and a leg. I did ask the bank for some money to obviously help me with the car costs and stuff. And the bank said, oh, so you obviously want a loan. And I was like, no, no, no. I just, I just want some free money. And they're like, well, that's not a service we provide. Not well, it should be. But this car I've got, it's like, it's proper fancy. You know, when you get something, it might be like a piece of clothing or a car or some shoes or a bit of technology or something. And it's not a thing that you're used to. It's very kind of like up here. You're not used to kind of up here things. You're used to the stuff down here. It feels very up here for me. And it, it's just very strange. I don't feel like it should be mine. It's, just, it's too fancy. It's got like lights and stuff on it. I know all cars have lights on it, but this one has like fancy lights on the inside. And it has like an eco mode and I don't know, like lots of other stuff. A sports mode so I can go faster. My other car, I was lucky if it just started. But I'm not the kind of person who I'm obsessed with like the latest car or anything like that. It doesn't really kind of phase me. So I'll keep this car and I'll literally drive it and run it into the ground until it can't work anymore. And then I'll get a new one. Like this car should last us like a good 10 year. But yeah, other than that, not a lot's happened really. I've just been busy crafting away for Halloween. I'm so excited for you to see the video. It's gonna be so good. I don't want to hype it up too much just in case it isn't as great as I think it's gonna be, but deep down I think it's gonna be fantastic. I think it's gonna be some of my best work yet. Anyway, let's get these baubles stuck on and we'll see what this is gonna look like. Okay, I think I finally finished hot gluing. So we have expectation. And reality. And I think I've done a pretty good job. I think it looks so cool. I think theirs looks a little bit more bubbly than mine. And their composition is kind of more flat, whereas mine's like an explosion. But how fun is that? And it's got eyeballs all around it and baubles and ah. Oh. It's just so much fun. It's very me. The difficult thing with something like this is it's really hard to say, like, stop. To tell yourself, is that enough baubles? Is that enough eyeballs? Because you could just keep adding and adding and adding. And trust me, I wanted to keep adding and adding and adding. But I stopped myself, and I think I stopped myself just at the right time. But how much did this cost us? I don't think I spent that much on it, actually. Okay, so this cost me £29.33. And to be fair, I don't think it's too bad at all for that price. I'm definitely putting this in the studio. I don't know where I can put it. I'm, I'm gonna have to find a place to put this and it's gonna be on shore because I love it. I might have to move something. There's just there's literally so much shit. Point is putting it somewhere no one can see it. That's all the point of making things like this. You wanna show them off? I'll, I'll find somewhere for it, I will. <clears throat> the doorbell's coming. Who's home? Who's here? 
Here's Amazon with more shit that you don't want, but you ordered anyway. So next up, I thought I would make the Beetlejuice inspired plant pot, and I was a little confused on how to make the tentacle part for this plant pot. However, I used that Milliput stuff a couple of weeks ago, and I still had some left over, so I thought that would be perfect for the tentacle. If you haven't seen that video where I made little sculptures with Milliput, I'll leave it in the top corner and you can have a little watch if you want. But I just mixed some Milliput together, and then decided to try and sculpt this tentacle shape, making sure that it would obviously fit inside the little terracotta plant pot, and everything was to kind of scale and it was looking okay and all of that kind of good stuff. I wanted this to look pretty good. Once the milliput was set it was looking a little bit like this and I think it's looking pretty cool. And now it was just time to paint on the black and white stripes. So to start off I painted the entire thing white in just a white acrylic paint. After a couple of coats it was looking pretty decent and once it was fully dry I decided to paint some black stripes on and I was hand painting this so a lot of things could go wrong and it was very intricate and tricky but I think I kind of think I did it. Now it was time for the little terracotta pot and I bought this lovely little tiny pot with a saucer and I just took it outside and spray painted it black. Once the plant pot was dry I decided to glue the little saucer to the base of the pot just to keep everything together. I then added a generous helping of hot glue onto the bottom of this little tentacle and secured that into the bottom of this little plant pot trying to get it as centered as I possibly could. Next up it was just using my favorite material again expandable form just to fill in some of the empty space inside the plant pot. Also this would help secure the tentacle in place even more than just the hot glue. Once that was done it was looking a little bit like this and I think I'm, I'm getting there. I'm making some progress. And now I decided I wanted to make a layer of soil just to kind of cover the white expandable form. So I just got some of that brown packaging paper that you get in the Amazon boxes, added some water to it, added a generous helping of PVA glue and then an absolute mountain of brown acrylic paint and just mixed and squished all of that together to create my top soil. And yes it looks like I've had a bit of an accident that I've like shit myself or something but I swear I haven't it's just brown paint I then just slop this mixture onto the top of this plant pot covering all of the white form and then just tidied up some bits where the paint had kind of got on the plant pot and onto the little tentacle because I don't want any skid marks on my little craft project that's no good is it once that was fully dry it was looking a little bit like this and I decided for the little grassy area on top of this plant pot I would use some moss and I found this moss in the studio I already had it and I think I had it from when I did something else. I think it was in one of the Blind Pinterest challenge episodes, but I can't remember which one or why I have it. I have moss in the studio and I don't know why, but it's come in handy. It's come in handy. Everything comes in handy. I always tell you that. That's why I always keep everything. So I just added a thick layer of PVA glue on top of this brown paper mixture and then squished as much of this moss on top as I possibly could. And once I was happy, I just put that to one side and let it dry. So we have expectation and reality. I think I've done a really, really good job of this. Like, look how cool that is. That's well nice. And it's all completely super, super duper solid. I think the moss on the top as well, I think that was a really good idea. I think that looks far more kind of realistic and just more interesting than what they've done. I think they've used like little artificial plants. And I think I've done a pretty good job of actually painting the tentacle and the plant pot. I'm, I, I just, I, it's just so good. Like, honestly, I, I, can't, I can't believe I managed to make this. It wasn't actually that difficult to make, which is obviously why I've managed to make it, but there's just a lot of steps involved. There's a lot of like doing this, waiting, doing this, waiting, and I, th I, th I think it's paid off. I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I think mine looks better than theirs, actually. I think I've done mine on a larger scale. I think theirs is way smaller than mine. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with myself. Okay, so in the end, all I needed to buy was the little terracotta pot, and that cost me £3.15, so it literally only cost me £3.15 to make this. How ridiculous is that? Obviously, that's because I have like loads of shit lying around. You probably won't have all of this stuff, but for me, it was only £3.15. Pretty impressed with that. And I did actually end up watching Beetlejuice. I watched it last night. I remembered I needed to watch it. And it's a pretty good film. I find it weird that people are inspired so much by these, these sandworm things, because they play such a, well, they don't play like a very small part, but they're not like in the film and the main feature of the film. I, I think you only see them about two or three times. And they look absolutely nothing like this, by the way, even in their original one. They've created a very simplified version. A sandworm, it kind of has a mouth and then it opens up and it has like another mouth inside of it. <laughs> And it's quite a good film. It has Catherine O'Hara in, aka Moira Rose. Hi! 
I'm Moira Rose. AKA Kevin's mom. Kevin! And I love Catherine. I think she's fantastic. I think she's a great actress. It also has a very, very young, what she called w Winona, Winona Ryder. Is that a name? Very, very young version of her in that. And I don't know whether the film particularly holds up well. They obviously use a lot of green screen and you can kind of see the green screen and a lot of like stock picture, animation and motion and stuff but i suppose for back in the day when it was made that was kind of state of the art wasn't it however saying that the set design and the costumes and all of that kind of other stuff absolutely amazing but you would expect that from a tim burton film i hadn't actually seen beetlejuice by the way but i can i can tick that off my bucket list now i've seen it and i'm quite pleased i've seen it it was worth it and i'm not scared of beetlejuice 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 <laughs> Okay, so next up, I thought we would try and make the spider wreath. And for this, I just bought a large embroidery hoop and just spray painted it black. So we've got it here. I've bought some ribbon and I think I've bought exactly the same ribbon as theirs. Well, it's very similar to theirs. It's black and white stripes. So we'll add this on first. So it looks like they've done it at the top. They've done like a nice little bow design. So I'm going to try and do that. But I'm not the best at tying bows. Then I'll do two bows like that. Tie them together. I don't know how people make like super fancy bows. See what that looks like. Yeah, that looks all right. Shall I hot glue it on actually? I might hot glue it. And then it can stay in place. All right, so just add a blob of hot glue here. And then we can stick our little bow on top. Oh, cute. Okay, that's that done. Right, and then I've bought some spiderweb stuff. And I think this has got spiders already on it. Oh yeah, it does. Great. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna hot glue this onto it, really. I was debating whether to basically open the embroidery hoop and then kind of jam the spiderweb stuff inside of it. But then I was like, ah, I'll just hot glue it. Less can go wrong with hot glue. Well, I don't know, like, if you're me, plenty can go wrong with hot glue. Plenty can go wrong with anything I touch. Oh, this is comfy, this. Oh, this is nice. Cut this down a bit, I don't need that much. So let's just hot glue some to the side of here. I feel like my spider web material stuff is a lot thicker than theirs. In fact, I'm gonna cut even more off. Mine's gonna be a little denser than theirs, but I think it's because of the stuff I've bought. It's just very, very thick. Oh, I feel like I want a Halloween party now. I feel like I want to decorate the house and everything. I'm not doing anything for Halloween this year. How upsetting. Let me know if you're going to any parties or doing anything for Halloween. That's why sometimes I would like to live in places like America because for like Halloween and Christmas and stuff, you just go like really like all in, don't you? And go proper far out with stuff. I think in the UK, well, you're lucky if anyone puts a bloody pumpkin out. Okay, it doesn't look particularly spider webby. Suppose you could play around with it. It keeps sticking to his own. It's driving us mad. And just stick some spiders on. I suppose I could just place these on. They just hook on, but I want them to be a little bit more permanent. Okay, so we have expectation. And reality. I think I've done an alright job. Obviously, like I said, theirs is very kind of like sparse and there's not a lot of cobweb on. Mine's a lot more cobwebby. Also, I didn't realise until this point that they have bigger spiders and different kinds of spiders. And I've just used the ones that they gave me in the pack. But I still think I've done a good job and it's a very, very easy craft to do. So easy. I might hang that on my door for Halloween. I think that'll be fun. Will it be enough to scare the kids off? I hope so. Don't want any kids coming around my house. Okay, so this little Halloween wreath cost me about £8.69. I've changed it around a bit because I haven't used all the materials that I bought. But I think for that price, eh, it's not too bad. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, so it's time for the final Halloween craft of today's video. I've said that sentence about 10 times. I just couldn't get my words out. And it's going to be the little spider night lights. So I bought these jars online and I have to admit they're far bigger than I thought they were going to be. They're pretty huge and they're just plastic as well. So they were quite cheap. And to get the frosted look that they have in the original pair, I decided I would spray them with this frost glass spray, which is obviously designed for glass But I think it can be used for plastic and stuff and I did that it worked very well And I let them dry and everything and I was kind of worried that the frosted spray stuff might potentially crack off because it's quite a flexible plastic However, I've got them here and they're still all completely frosted Nothing's moving nothing's chipping off so it's done the trick It's worked very well and then for the jars I bought these big terrifying tarantulas to go inside. I think they'll be really cool. And some little battery powered tea lights. And I think that's what they've done. I'm almost sure they have. But also it looks like they've stuffed the jars with a
with a certain material and I couldn't kind of figure out what it was. So I'm just going to use some paper towel. I think that'll be fine. It's definitely not cotton wool. It looks like kind of tissue paper or some sort of paper. So I think this is going to work okay. We will take the lids off and then I'll probably put the tea lights in first. I haven't even checked to see if these work. Oh yeah, they work well. I'm thinking because my jars are quite large, I'm gonna put three in. Because I've got loads of them, I may as well. You know what, I'm gonna put four in. I've decided I'm gonna put five in. I don't know whether this is gonna be overkill, but I wanted to really show the lights. See, that's already looking pretty cool. You can kind of see the light inside of it, but that's all right. Now, I want to position a spider. I'm wondering whether you're going to be able to see. I'll just position it kind of like that. And then just stuff it with some paper roll. I don't really see the point of putting this in, but it looks as if they've done this. And the thing is, this is mainly for like nighttime. It's not really a daytime craft. Because already I can see kind of everything that's inside the jar. It doesn't look that great. But I'm hoping when the light's out, it'll look pretty cool. And I think that's all I need to do. But we have expectation. <laughs> And reality. And to be fair, I think mine, I, I think mine look better than theirs. I think mine look really good actually. Mine kind of look like they're on fire. I think you can see more detail with mine and they're a lot less kind of ambiguous as theirs. But I think that's pretty cool. I'm glad I put five lights in. I think if I'd had any less than that, it would have looked very, very boring. Oh, I'm kind of into it. They look so spooky. It almost looks like an alien or something. I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm happy. Yeah. And surprisingly, I think this was the, oh. Oh no, <laughs> try that again. <laughs> And surprisingly, I think this was the most expensive craft project in today's episode. So in total, this cost me £34.86. But obviously, I've made three of them. So if you divide that by three, you know, that's... that's... A certain amount of money. I, I can't do the maths in my head. You'll have to do it at home. You could even change the coloured lights in there. You could buy some like little blue ones or red ones or whatever. You could even put something that isn't a spider in. Very versatile. I think a lot of these crafts have been very versatile actually. Unlike me. I'm just kidding. I'm very versatile. No, I'm not. Some people won't understand that joke either, I've just realised. Anyway, that just about does it for today's Halloween special of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And in all seriousness, all of these crafts today, so easy to make. If I can do all of them quite successfully, literally anyone can. A child could probably make them. Yeah, I think a child could. They might struggle with the Beetlejuice one, but all the others, piece of piss. But I'll see you next week. I've got two videos, I think, coming out next week. I've lost track of all the videos I'm recording, but I think I'm doing two next week. I've got one midweek one, and then I've got a final Halloween extravaganza, which should be fun. It should be really good, actually. I don't want to get your hopes up, though, just in case it's shit, but... I think it's going to be really nice. Do I want to give you a hint? I'm not going to give you any hints, actually. You'll just have to wait and see and find out what I've been up to. But I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week, hopefully. <laughs>